Nicole okay. Kermali. Okay. I write the blog MissCareerGirl.com. I don't know if anyone had read my blog before coming Thank here. Thank you. I blog about everything career related, specifically for the 20 something professional. Although what I've learned from my, my adventures in blogging can be very uh, relevant to just about anyone in any stage of their career. I think most of you guys probably came to this session because you want to know how to use social media in order to find a job, in order to maybe switch industries, to get promoted, to get new clients for your small business. So hopefully what I say today will give you some new, um, <coughs> kind of a new way of looking at social media and give you some techniques to bring into your own career search or whatever your own goals are for being here. So like I said, I'm Nicole, and the one thing I have in common with you Steelers fans is that I went to college with your quarterback. We may or may not have dated for a hot minute <laughs> in my dreams. But um, I went to Miami of Ohio, and I studied finance and entrepreneurship. Entrepreneurship has always been my passion but I work by day in the financial industry. I started my career selling subprime mortgages about two weeks after college graduation, which if you guys have watched the news at all the past couple years, you know all about subprime lending and that it's pretty much responsible for the disastrous economy that we're in right now. So I couldn't really sleep at night doing that, and I transitioned out of that job into commercial banking for Chicago-based businesses. And now I work at J.P. Morgan Chase and asset-based lending. So in a short amount of time from graduating college, I've, I've done a lot into that time from uh, all these different experiences to once I started the blog in November of 2008, so almost two years ago now, that's really when the door started opening for me in, in terms of just totally awesome new opportunities. I've been asked to write books. I've got to meet a former bachelorette. I've got to interview people from The Biggest Loser. I get free books and products all the time, asked to be part of PR campaigns, all because just normal old 25-year-old me had a blog. So um, I've definitely seen firsthand how something like Twitter or blogging can totally change the trajectory of your career. Before I was planning for this presentation, I talked to some of the recruiters in my network that I respect most. 15 recruiters all over the country that I would say are pretty high profile answered a bunch of questions for me. So of all those questions, these are the ones that I felt were most relevant. 60% of these recruiters rely on LinkedIn to source all of their open job postings. The other 40% come from referrals, which may or not be, it could be online referrals, offline referrals, but usually everything starts on LinkedIn. None of these top recruiters have ever sourced a candidate from Twitter or from a blog or from a video resume. And a lot of them were not big fans of video resumes at all. Um, every one of the recruiters had good things to say about when candidates reach out to them online. They really liked it. And only half of these recruiters will check you out online on Google before inviting you in. So social media is actually not the biggest part of how they find their people. And so you might be wondering, why am I here telling you about social media. The reason social media is a big part of why I'm here and how a lot of people get ahead is because they use it just to start conversations. And the key to, con the, to a big career is simply conversations. But how are these people you don't know ever going to help you? Most people's networking circle looks something like this. They may have a relative, a former coworker, a neighbor that they go to when they're looking for a new job or a client. They may feel like they have a lot of people they know really well. Here's my network, me and my car. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I may have less connections, but I'm gonna meet a lot more because it, it's, it's not leading to the same path. And social scientists often say that loose connections are the, the most important thing of getting your career ahead because you're going all to new directions instead of, okay, your aunt's gonna refer you to your uncle and your uncle's gonna refer you to your neighbor and it's, keep, it's, keep, it's bringing you back to the same place every single time. So you being online is to start this sort of chain of meeting all new people. Some of you guys have seen the, uh, the internet marketing model where we have a funnel here. Social media, you have blogging, product reviews, Twitter, 
Yelp, all these different things are influencing what, what we do, how we shop, who we meet. So you're using social media to get a lot of exposure. Let's say I have a thousand Twitter followers. I'm exposed to a thousand people every time I send out a tweet. I may only have a conversation with a hundred of those people at some point or another. I may send a direct message to 10 of those people. And then I meet, may meet one of those thousand for coffee. And then end up, you know, getting that ball rolling into my network. So that's why people say the number of more followers you have, that's a debate. You know, different people say different things. But I, I think whatever your goals are, you need to find out where people are hanging out online, where your clients are hanging out online, and you need to get exposed to them and start a conversation with them in hopes that you meet them. Now notice I don't say exposure leads down to a job offer or a million dollar client. No, this cycle has to repeat itself all the time in order to work. So LinkedIn, LinkedIn is a big part of your career plan or your client plan because if you're not online, you don't exist. No one's gonna ever find you. And blogs, I, I have this debate with some people recently. To me, the purpose of blogs is so that you can have something to talk about with all these people. Social media gives you a reason to contact these people, something to talk about. And Twitter, I've had a lot of luck with. I think it's the easiest way to start a direct conversation with the right person at the right time. For example, the person who did my website, I sent out a tweet that said, does anyone know someone um, in Chicago who can help me with WordPress? My now very good friend Matt wrote back right away at that exact moment when I was so frustrated with my WordPress. Yeah, I'm Matt, I can help you out. We met, he read my website. He's actually a good friend of mine now, Matt Chevy. I don't know if any of you guys follow him online. Um, the person who did my logo, the person who did this logo, all because somebody contacted me at the right time and they did end up you know, getting their goal accomplished just from sending out a tweet or answering a tweet. So a couple of tips for LinkedIn, I get this question a lot. And it's quite simple actually with LinkedIn. Um, it's just, you need to make LinkedIn just part of your routine. And actually all of this I think should be part of your routine. First, just complete your profile, very simple. Fill it out, write the summary, you feel awkward. Um, write it in first person, not in third person. You're writing about yourself, we know that, it's okay. Update your profile often because just like a Google, you know, just like a website, every time you're sending an update, you're gonna be at the top of the list. You're gonna be on that email that gets sent out that says recently updated profiles. Groups, um, the recruiters that I talked to said that groups are a big place that they host jobs, look for candidates, email people saying, I have this position open, do you know anyone who would, who would be good for it? Usually they're emailing you because they're hoping you'll say you're interested for it. So be very aware of what's going on in those groups. Start your own group. I have a group called uh, Young Professional Women in Chicago. I've met a lot of girls that become readers that I end up guest posting on. We meet for coffee, we do different things because I started a group that is basically meeting my target market for my blog and that group is gonna help me accomplish my goals of growing my readership. Check status updates. A lot of the recruiters I talked to said they put these job openings as their status, looking for a CPA with five years of experience in Chicago. Look at those all the time. You can get an email sent to you so you don't really have to bother even going to LinkedIn. Just check that email out for the updates. When you're writing your summary, your profile, think about keywords. If you were a recruiter searching for somebody, what would you be searching for? Let's say you're a graphic designer and you, you, know, you design this on this type of system or whatever. Put all of that into your, your profile to make it readable, of course, but you need to make sure that you can be easily found by what you are specifically good at, what sets you apart. And then anytime you connect with someone, let's say today you get a bunch of business cards, after you leave here with that stack of business cards, go and friend them on LinkedIn. It's not weird, you're not creepy or stalking. The more people you meet, the better. Put them on there, I guarantee you, we're all gonna lose the business cards in one of our bags somewhere find them in five years, it's not very helpful. But if you have them on LinkedIn, everybody's in one spot, and you'll know that someday down the line when your friend needs a job, and you can connect with that person, or you may need something, they're always right there. And of course, my favorite, get recommendations, especially if you're a small business owner. 
Um, Matt Chevron is really good at this. Every time he has a client, he asks for a recommendation. Now he has a whole, I don't remember how many he has now, but just tons of recommendations from his real clients. That's the best type of free advertising you could ever get. Real clients that are happy with your work. Bosses that are happy with your performance. Again, whatever your specific goal is. Maybe you even want to get promoted within your current company. Ask your managers or your teammates to write a recommendation so that when you do go for that review, they have something to look at that says, you know, you do a good job. And you can always refer people. If you have questions, check, check out my, my recommendations to get validation of who I am as a person and the quality of work that I can provide. Blogs, like I said earlier, you really, really, really should be reading blogs all the time. I think this is, I'm a huge reader, so I guess I'm biased, but you need to do this because you want to stay on top of industry trends. You want, you want to identify in your local market who's, who's a rising star, who's new on the market, who's a power player, what's my competition doing? They're all going to write about it right there. So this is a way to get inside of your customers' heads, your competitors' heads, see market trends, and this is also a really great excuse to send someone an email. Hi, I saw that you, you, know, you started doing this new product. I used it recently. I thought it was great. I love what you're doing. I'd love to meet you for coffee sometime. Once you send a blogger a compliment, nine out of 10 times, they're going to write you back. They're going to be so happy you complimented them. Because let's be honest, a lot of us bloggers work not for dollars, but for compliments and for helping the other people that we blog to. So don't be afraid to reach out to the bloggers that you read all the time or people that you think could help you or that you could help them. And of course, you can always understand your prospects. Let's say you have a local clothing boutique. You can read the product reviews and the blogs of people that are doing what you do. They may not like something, may, they may love something. Well, take note of all the information that you're reading in the blog posts and in the comments and adjust it so that you can get closer to what your goals are. Twitter. A lot of people tell me they don't need a Twitter account because nobody cares what they ate for breakfast. And why does anyone care what I'm doing? And I think it's weird and I don't get it and it's not fun. <laughs> Tweet. Twitter is, for me, of all of these three methods, I just think it's wonderful. Actually, I'm here because Jen here in the front row followed me on Twitter and she read my blog and she thought, oh, maybe this would be a good person to come speak at, at PodCamp. Um, this is how I got offered to write books and go different places and events and products and being featured on Monster.com and all these other things. It's just because I'm on Twitter. Um, journalists use it all the time. I was actually on the front cover of uh, the Red Eye in Chicago, and that was because someone saw me on Twitter and they wanted me to be a source for their story. I just made their job really easy, and I just got really excited that now my blog is on the front page of a Chicago newspaper. Um, so use lists, let's say you're in um, consulting, use lists to find other consultants in your area and start listening to what they're saying and then just jump in on the conversation. Don't, don't put anything in their face, you know, I can provide this service. No, if they're talking about the Steelers game, just talk about the Steelers game. Just like you would in a bar, just be friendly with these people and make, you know, this camaraderie and then eventually it'll switch over into something more professional. I use search.twitter.com if I'm, let's say, writing a specific article that I would like to find information about or want people to read. Just like Google, search.twitter.com, I Google that topic, I see what people are talking about real time, and then I just jump in and respond to the conversations. It's all about conversation. Also, if you're looking for a job, you have to think of your job search in a whole new way. We're in a terrible economy, recruiters are being cut. It's just a very different time than it was maybe five years ago to find a job. So what I always suggest is find out what you want to do. You got to know your goal first. Find the companies that fit those goals and then start talking to them. Start seeing who's on Twitter, what they're saying, follow them, compliment them, send them a direct message, you know, of course, in a, in a nice way. <coughs> and uh, from there, it's going to transition. What's your Twitter? Miss Career Girl. M S. Career girl, follow me and send me a message so I can follow you back. Oh, that looks familiar. So, social media is not really worth anything for your career unless you're willing to take it offline. 
you can't just be Twitter friends with somebody and expect great things to come of it. Unless you go to lunch, go to coffee, introduce them to somebody. I call it the bridge. Some people think the bridge is an elevator pitch. I think elevator pitches are terrible. Why do I think that? Because let's pretend you're in an elevator. You know, you're supposed to do this pre-made one minute speech about, hi, I'm Nicole Grimaldi and I do social media consulting, blah, blah, blah. It's a rehearsal pitch that sounds the same. It sounds impersonal. And you're always pitching to somebody that you've never met before in a time where they're gonna get off the elevator and then you're never gonna see them again. So what's the use of that? And that same scenario really applies online and you guys get it all the time on Twitter. Those direct messages that say, hi, I help people you know, increase their Facebook following, follow me. I delete those every single time. Because why do I care about somebody who's writing a pre-made message and spamming it out in hopes that their numbers will garner some kind of response? I'm not interested in that. So don't do the elevator pitch, whether it's in person or online. You need to make these relationships more than just online, like I said. So instead of an elevator, elevator pitch, do something much more personalized that's you know, complimenting them, showing that you know who they are. And then from that, create these offline relationships that grow into your personal board of directors. Everybody here should have a personal board of directors. Every company has one. Every person should have one too. You have to think of yourself, whether you're an entrepreneur or not, as you incorporated. You are your own entity. You have services to provide, products to provide, whether that be as an employee of a large company, small business, whatever. You have to have people guiding you in the right direction. And that means a, a wide variety of different people. So I have some different people here. I personally have a board of directors. And if you have all the same types of people, sorry, my phone's still on. If you have all the same types of people advising you, you're not really going to have much luck. So here's a couple of the different people. The mentor, somebody who's really willing to open their uh, their network to you and sit down with you and push you in, in front of the right people. You need a coach who's just there to listen, reflect, almost just let you talk yourself into the right direction. Someone who asks a lot of clear questions, sort of like an investor would to you, or an interviewer if you were going to a job interview. You need someone who's gonna challenge all your ideas, make them better, someone who's been there. Now, whatever your goals are, this list is gonna look very different but I just put these down so that you would get an idea of what works best for you. Now, I wanna leave some time so that you guys can ask me how I can help you with your personal situations. If, I mean, are there people here looking for jobs or clients? I actually have a question about LinkedIn. Yeah. Um, I have like about three completely different career paths. Mm -hmm. Should I set up a LinkedIn for each one or just one page? Because it's kind of like confusing, like managing. I totally understand what you mean. I too have sort of two worlds. I always say that I live in this finance corporate and then this whole social media. I think you can very much combine both of them. In your headline, get really creative with how you I'm not sure what your, could you tell me what your sort of general backgrounds are? Yeah, I do, um, main, mainly right now I'm artistic directing and, and founder of a theatrical Middle Eastern dance company. Okay. Um, but I also teach uh, dance fitness classes and I do theater props. So they're kind of like different things. But I think that you could easily combine it. If you're thinking in keywords, theater, dance, I think you could very much combine them. I would have one profile and just make it sort of a powerhouse profile with a lot in there, that's okay. Your summary can explain if you want to break it down into different bullet points. Easy to read. I don't like paragraphs, but bullet, short paragraph is okay, but then bullet points and then short paragraphs under your job descriptions. And um, I think in your headline, I think mine right now says something like, uh, finance professional with internet marketing background or something, yeah. you can find a way to combine it all and then join different groups and stay involved in those. That's probably more likely how you're going to connect with people 
don't ever wait for somebody to connect with you. Because the, the likelihood is that you're going to connect with them first and then start a conversation and take it offline. Does that make sense? That makes sense. Okay. Anyone else have any questions for me? Yeah. Um, well, first, um, I think of artistic director for a good title for her. With the yeah. I would, I would think artistic director might help. In your, in your headline? The cover book. And then something with your dance stuff? Areas of expertise include? Yeah. Yeah. But my question was, what was the post that you posted on Twitter that got your front page on the red eye? Um, the, the tweet? Mm -hmm. this, what, this journalist had been following me for a while, and she, I'm not sure exactly which specific tweet, but she said she had been following me for a while, and she found me on Twitter, saw my blog, and thought I'd be a great uh, resource for the story she was writing, which was about um, things that people do wrong in interviews. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure she read I had some posts about interviewing, a lot of posts about interviewing tips. So I'm sure my post gave me credibility that I was right for the story. Mm -hmm. And that's another thing blogs do too, is if I'm, let's say I'm in finance and I want to switch industries right now in a bad economy, and I've never worked in, in internet marketing, I've never worked in a marketing firm, what do I have that's going to give me credibility to these employers? Why would they hire me? Well, now I have a blog. They've seen that I've built somewhat of a brand. I understand how this world works. <laughs> And I think if you do start on Twitter, and then you have a blog to back up what you're saying and who you are and your brand, and it expands on it, then they have really something, okay, this girl's definitely who I want for my story now, because she has a blog. She has a platform that backs up her action. Does that make sense? Nicole, is yeah. there anything you want to mention about the job hunt chat that you do yeah. on Monday nights, like the chats within Twitter, how people can connect that way? Yeah, that's a great point about Twitter. Um, a couple different people and I, Rich De Mateo of CornOnTheJob.com, and I started this job hunt chat on Monday nights. And the chat is, we do four questions, one question every 15 minutes. That is a great, ch it's 9 o'clock Eastern time if anyone's in the job market or wants to just get advice on everything job search related. We started that chat. And where is it up? What? The hashtag is job hunt chat. Mm -hmm. So if you guys follow tweetchat.com, if you go to tweetchat.com, type in the hashtag job hunt chat, you can see a live stream, real time, of everything that's being talked about. And the questions come from real people, readers of the blogs. And that's an example of how you can use Twitter to get in front of a very targeted audience and to get your questions answered. All, a lot of recruiters are on there, a lot of job seekers are on there. So that's a place where everyone's there at the same time, a great place to start a conversation, send a direct message, start an email, maybe you guys will end up meeting on Skype or offline and take it into something more. Like I said, whatever your niche is, consulting, graphic design, marketing, whatever, look for chats on Twitter and participate. In fact, that's probably the biggest bang for your buck is if you go into one of those chats, you may not even get as much out of tweeting every two hours as you would just attending one chat a week for an hour because you're really connecting with the right people at the right time. Katie online asked, how do you use Twitter to fund a job? But I think you probably just touched on I that. Think, I think, so. tell her, <laughs> if you're watching Katie. Um, I think that the, the way you use Twitter to get a job is, is to really just connect with people and start conversations. That's it. And again, use, use those lists, use the local searches, connect with people in your area. And so that you're no longer just a resume in a pile, you're a face, you're a name, you're a real warm body. People want to do business with people and hire people, not just stacks, you know, as a resume in a pile. So just use that to build your brand as a person. And don't be afraid to put yourself out there. And I don't want to say sell yourself because it's not. It's really just saying, hi, I exist and I'm interested in what you have to say. That's it. Do you mind if I add something to that? Yeah, please. So I've gotten two or three of my jobs through Facebook and Twitter, and um, never ask for a job. Never. Start the conversation. Never. Yeah. And never ask for a client. And if you're selling something, never say, I sell forever bands. The point is to do this sort of dance around that topic, and it's not being fake. It's that who wants, who wants to just like, Hi, I sell Girl Scout cookies. Bye. Hi. No, no. You want to just build this rapport first, 
common ground, see what they're looking for. What do you want? What do they want? What are their expectations? The minute that you try to sell them something or ask them for something, they're no longer interested in that in you because you look like a spammer. It's very impersonal. Yeah. I could add something to that as well. The other piece of that is the personal benefit that if you've started a conversation first, you can find out if you actually have no interest in working for them whatsoever. Absolutely. I think it could save both parties a lot of trouble down the road. Mm -hmm. That's for sure. And I think that's why when I said pick the companies that you want to work for and sort of do your due diligence online first, I think now instead of you know trying to target a specific role, we should target a company because sometimes just getting in the company in a bad economy is the best thing. Once you find out more and more about this company, they may or may not be for you anymore. Save yourself the time and them and just move on. Does anyone else have any uh, questions? Someone wants to know what the best way to take your Twitter connections offline is. Um, I just think send them a direct message. Hi, I love your blog. The other day, let's say somebody sent a, a tweet that said, it was a Chicago small business entrepreneurs group, so I sent them a direct message that said, do you guys do any events for young female entrepreneurs? And they said, no, but we would love to do that. Let's set up a time to talk. So I was really just asking them something about what they already do. And then they responded back, and now we have a meeting. I met somebody last week who had a really cool internet marketing firm. I asked him a question about one of his tweets. We met in his office a week later. And my personal, the way I run my career, I try to meet somebody every single week for coffee. And that may be, sound really intimidating like a lot for some of you guys. I know that I have some entrepreneurial goals of my own. And I also believe strongly in the idea of career insurance. We've seen September 11th, we've seen Enron, a company that seemed perfectly legit, totally crashed, everyone's out of a job. We've seen the economy blow up. We've seen everyone going from home ownership because of these subprime mortgages. Now everyone's in foreclosure. There's no guarantee that that very big, big safe company that you worked so hard to get a job at is ever going to be your, your meal ticket. And there's no, there's no really guarantee anything's going to be your, your meal ticket. So the reason that I really believe in this and the reason that I do this, meet someone for coffee every week, I work in finance at a big company. If I were to get cut tomorrow, because of the network that I've built and the people in my town that I go meet every week and maintain these relationships with, I have no doubt that I could do some freelance work and pay my rent until I find another job. I mean, we insure everything in our lives, our house, our car, but we don't seem to think about insuring the one thing that pays for all of that. So this is how you, you sort of buy your own career insurance policy. So really try to get in this habit, and it's gonna be weird at first for some of you. I'm clearly not very shy, but don't think of it as a shy thing. You can help this person as much as they can help you. You mentioned um, looking for blogs that might help you connect with interest. Where would you find um, certain blogs? Like There's certain plenty source? of blog search engines, like Technorati is one. Um, Google has a blog search now. Meg, I don't know if you know any of the other searches that are popular. Technorati is the biggest one that I've used. Yeah, that's what I use too. So search for and the register topic. Register your own blog there as well. Yeah. How many of you guys have blogs? Okay. And have you guys used your blog as sort of a vehicle to meet new people? No. I'm surprised. You can also use it like We Are Famous or Twit Famous or something where you can register your Twitter profile and list like what kind of Twitter person you are. Right. And you can search on there as well to find people similar to you. If you are a blogger or any sort of, any sort of social media user, Register yourself on Stumble, on Dig, on any of these platforms that you can, and stop feeling bad about self-promotion. It's not. All it's doing is allowing people to find you easier, and half the time you're going to be helping them. I get emails every single day from college students. I'm helping people uh, by talking to them or introducing them to someone in my network more than maybe they're helping me, but the point of the story is, whatever the case, they needed to find me somewhere in order to get help and I need to find other people to get help. So everyone's helping everyone. I find that I'm, the online community is extremely friendly and nice, especially Twitter. I actually have met some of my mentors on Twitter that I keep in touch with and some good friends, um, which 
you know, after college graduation in a big new city, it's really hard to meet people, and people are more than willing to help you with whatever you need on there. So definitely do your diligence of being registered and doing the searches you need to do to connect with the right people. I've got a couple questions here. Okay. It also says guests, so I don't know if it's the same person or not. Um, where do you see your blog taking you in the next few years? I'm new to LinkedIn. What's the best, fastest way to gain credibility, build connections, and get recommendations? And what are a few book recommendations you have for people on the job hunt? Okay. LinkedIn. How to get credibility. I think, I think we covered it. F fill out that whole profile. Request recommendations. You may need to request eight recommendations to get four. So request as many as you need to. Um, job history. Fill out your profile. LinkedIn. I think that's pretty basic. And then just start talking to people in groups. Book recommendations, gosh, I love reading, so I should probably do a blog post about this. A book that I love just for sort of seeing how social media can ramp up anything that you're doing, and a person that I absolutely admire and love, Gary Vaynerchuk. Does anyone, everyone know who that is? If you don't, go watch a video, he's so funny, and he's so inspiring. He's a guy that owns a wine store with family business, immigrant family, started Wine Library TV, multi-millionaire, but more importantly, just so energetic and happy. He wrote a book called Crush It. I highly recommend it. It's a fast, easy read. And that will sort of illustrate more of what I'm talking about here, of how you can use social media to become an expert in whatever niche it is, even if it's kind of a weird hobby or something. That's a great book. I'm reading a book right now that I haven't finished, but I'm totally hooked. It's called Good in a Room. What is it? Good in a Room. And it's written by a, a former Hollywood agent who had to basically fund ideas before they were ever put into action. And she teaches you how to basically convince people, not even convince, but have these conversations with people that sell your idea and make people believe in you. What else? You may have to do a blog post. You might have to come check my blog. Those are the two big ones that I really like. Jen, what was the other question? The um, first one... Where do I see was my where blog? do you see your blog in the next few years? It's an interesting question because um, I get that a lot and I think about that a lot. My blog started two years ago as simply a passion project because I was working in a bank where it was suits, nylons, black, and navy blue. And you may or may not guess I don't fit totally into that world. I have a lot of a lot of energy, a lot of pink going on in here. So I had to start something <laughs> that, that got that whole side of me out. And that's how the blog started. I did not know about blogs or social media. I didn't learn it really in school or anything. I learned spreadsheets and numbers. So my blog started sort of as a fluke and has grown quite a bit in two years and taken me places I never would have expected. So it's hard to predict where it'll take me in the next couple of years. I will say I'm so, I'm so in love with this whole social media world and taking internet marketing classes. So I'd love to put something together that teaches other people how to start a brand and start a blog and get their career going um, the way I sort of accidentally did. Um, I think there'll be some products and some, some consulting going on in the next couple of years, but it's hard to say for sure. Yeah. I had a question. If you have the old-fashioned handwritten reference letter recommendation from a boss from a different type back to the suits and the navies and mm -hmm. all that. Um, is there a way to get that on LinkedIn? So, so you're you saying you have a physical recommendation letter? Yes. Um, yeah, what I would do is say, hi, Bob, remember you wrote me this thank you letter? Would you, would you please, or you know, could you please put this online for me? They're not online. They're not on LinkedIn? No. I'm very surprised. Uh, you know what? I think you could do a recommendation even without a profile. You can go on there and write a recommendation. Okay. I would still. I mean, I would if I have the letter, can you just scan it in? That's yeah. what I'm wondering. Can you scan it in? I don't know. There's I don't a place know if you to get an post attachment. That. I don't think you, that they have that. Well, that's just, a good idea. You might have to like actually retype it. Well, couldn't you just in. you know send them whoever the person is and say, hey, would you mind if I scan this and put? I mean, they might want. I mean, join you on LinkedIn, but if not, you could just say, hey, I already have your letter. Is it okay if I scan it and put it? You know. The this only thing, thing with that is, when I write recommendations for other people, the first thing they ask you is who it's from. Yeah. And so if that person's not on, I'm not sure that there would be a way to connect the letter to the profile. Okay. 
So that might be tricky. In there, you know, that's a question I've never been asked. There may be a way to just fill their name in. I'll have to look at that because I'm sure there's a lot of that situation going on. Yeah, because I've got two letters of recommendation from two supervisors who don't use it, don't want to, have no intention whatsoever of using it. And with recommendations, even if you take like a paragraph out of it, mm -hmm. that's probably best because if you have eight recommendations and let's say someone's recruiting you, they just want to glance at it. Yeah, they don't want the whole don't, letter. Don't put the whole letter, is right. my opinion. But I'm or you could put like something sure. that says, can provide hard copies of recommendations in your profile. There sure. You yeah. A final request. Yeah. How has the direction of your blog changed over the last two years? My blog, like I said, started as a free WordPress blog with a Google image. Uh, then I was real frustrated and trying to like watch YouTube videos on how to do web design. So I gave up on that quickly, sent that frustrated tweet, met Matt, updated the blog to a customized WordPress theme with a customized header from someone I met on Twitter too. And um, once I did that, the traffic went up quite a bit because it was optimized for SEO. Now, I would tell any of you who are blogging, just learn a couple basics about SEO because it makes quite a difference in your traffic, which means, like that funnel we talked about, a lot more exposure and a lot more opportunities. Um, the blog is also, I think I found my voice a lot, and I'm able to put myself out there. There was a post I wrote, I think it was December of last year. Does everyone know who Penelope Trunk is? She founded Brazen Careerist. She's an extremely interesting woman. She puts her whole life out online, divorce, very personal things that I don't even want to say online right now. And I just wrote a post questioning, why are you putting yourself out online that much when you have a career blog, a career site for young professionals in which in the front page it says, watch what you put online, it's following you everywhere. She's contradicting her advice. So I just simply put it out there and I asked, what's that about Penelope? She wrote back, Dan Schwab wrote back, a fast company blogger wrote back. I'm telling you this story because that's something that shows how much my blog has changed because when I started, I never would have put something like that out there. Where I was t talking to Penelope, very willing to, is very controversial. My traffic that day, I must have had 3,000 hits that day. And ever since, my traffic has probably doubled and stayed that high. So I think you're willing, the more you get comfortable, you're, you're willing to put yourself out there and ask hard questions. You're willing to tell stories about what your life is really like. And people actually usually email me and say thanks for being so real. Um, I think that, and then the more authentic you get, it, it just this kind of just keeps on going and your traffic and response and opportunities keep growing with it. So. Uh, Kay wants to know if you think interviewers would find it creepy or stalkerish if you bring up their social media vehicles during an interview? Absolutely not if you do it correctly. I had an interview once um, where I, I looked, that I had an interview with the CEO of a startup company. And you know, interviewing with the CEO can be kind of intimidating. So I went on and Googled him. I wanted to see kind of who he was, what he was all about. Thought it would be an easy way to build some rapport, see which kind of interviewer he'd be so I could prep myself. Turns out he went to Miami of Ohio and right away from the beginning of the interview, that was one of the first things we talked about. I see you went to Miami, and we just talked about all these memories from college and what he was involved in, what I was involved in. We had a lot in common, and I thought that that interview would have gone a totally different way had I not stopped him on LinkedIn first. So no, I do not think it's creepy. I actually think you should do that. Whether or not you use the information is up to you, but why would you go into a situation not prepared when all you really have to do is make a quick stop online and have a much better scheme of kind of where this conversation is going. I think we're almost I got another out of one time. Here. We'll do, we'll okay. do that one. How do you find a work-life balance when you have so much going on? Passion. You must love what you do every day. I really, really love the blog. In fact, I'm trying to find more time to put towards it, but when you love what you're doing, it just all becomes part of your schedule, and blogging for me is something I like to do in the morning, and you just... You just make it work. Just care about the people you write for. Love what you do. It's pretty easy. Thank you guys so much. If you guys have any questions, please contact me anytime. I'll order it. Back.